Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again to the next episode in the series. The past few episodes we've had a little discussion about the MVVM architecture. We've gone ahead and created our view model, our repository class. Uh, we've actually implemented our repository class here with what we're going to need. Uh, and we've kind of cleaned up our main activity a little bit to basically contain the information that it, that it uh, requires. So. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and implement a little bit uh, the view model, I guess layer of the of the architecture pattern. And so we're going to go ahead and just well, first we're going to go ahead and create what they call a live data. So we're going to go ahead and create the attraction list live data. Now, don't be uh, don't be afraid to have these. Uh, sorry, I just can't. I can't type and and, and talk at the same time. Uh, don't be afraid to have these names get a little long. Uh, I think it's more important to have them be uh, descriptive here, and because they're always appended with um, live data at the end, they kind of can grow depending upon what you're trying to communicate here. But um, I would always err on the side of being a little bit more verbose for these kinds of things because it makes a lot more sense when you're reading it in your uh, when you're actually using this live data and so uh, what we're going to need here or sorry bef uh, before we go any further uh, I just want to talk about a little bit about the live data I've been talking about this is immutable live data uh, so you can see here the immutable live data extends the live data uh, abstract class and Let's see, yeah, okay, so this isn't bad. Live data is a data holder class that can be observed within a given life cycle. Uh, this means that an observer can be added in a pair with a life cycle owner, and this observer will be notified about modifications of wrapped data only if the paired life cycle owner is in an active state. So if you saw some of the other videos, uh, or a couple of the videos before this one where we went ahead and I talked about the benefits of things being lifecycle aware. Uh, this is exactly what they're talking about, right? So you can attach an observer, let's say in your home fragment, and your observer is only going to get fired or your, or your observer is only going to be notified of uh, the fact that the data has changed if the system knows that the lifecycle of, of this fragment um, is within a state that it's acceptable to you know uh, to receive that kind of input uh, or receive that kind of change, and then you know the live data wrapper or, or the mutable live data around it uh, just allows you to um, change the actual underlying data that exists uh, within the live data, but um, and it, and it also has some thread safe operations that we won't get into right now. But when you start talking about networking, you definitely need things to happen. Uh, on the main thread, but you also need uh, you, you need UI based things to happen on your main thread, but you need networking based things to happen on your networking thread. Uh, so there's a little bit of uh, you know more advanced topics to get into there. So anyway, the mutable live data is a very um, a very powerful class to allow you to do that. So the mutable live data is of type T. The uh, so it gives you a tremendous flexibility to basically fill this with whatever it is that you want. And in our case, we're going to have a mutable live data of a list of attractions so that our home fragment can observe this list. And when the data has changed or when the data is published, the uh, adapter will be notified of this new list. We will redraw the screen and things will be all, all good and well. So uh, we're starting to get into the realm of the fact that the data is going to truly, uh, and these observers or these live datas are going to truly start to drive the UI. And uh, I don't know if this is going to be the best example of it, but as we continue with this pattern, which we will at, at this point moving forward for any application that we end up building on the channel, uh, at some points you'll realize that it's, it's really convenient to have this separation of concerns. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that when there's a, when there's a prime example of it. But uh, Anyway, I am excited for that. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to create an init function because we need to pass in the context uh, to this function because our repository layer re requires this. So let's just go ahead and split this so that we can now see what we're doing. 
Um, so we have our view model, we have our repository, our view model has a repository object with it, and so we can actually utilize that to our advantage. So we're going to go ahead and say the attractions list equals the repository parse attractions, passing in the context that we need. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and just say attractions list live data, post value, attractions. Uh, there's also another method here. Uh, sorry, live data. You can just set the actual. Uh, so these two things do the exact same thing. You're either posting the value or you're actually setting the value, which under the hood, this actually inside, uh, yeah, it just ends up calling super, but it's it's actually called the set value function. Again, that's just the Kotlin uh, property syntax going in there. Uh, but the difference here that, that you should know about is that this happens on whatever thread uh, this block of code is actually running on, or, or I guess essentially whatever line of code this, um, whichever thread this line of code is running on, it gets set as well uh, to that or, or from that thread. Whereas the post value uh, function, let's see, does it say anything? Posts a task to a main thread to set the given value. Exactly. So, uh, you know, if you're on a background thread and you want to notify the main thread of uh, a particular change, you go ahead and use your post value. In this case, we're actually going to be running things on the main thread because we're not handling multi threading at the moment. And if all of this is way over your head and super confusing, absolutely don't worry about it. Just know that there are two different ways to actually set the data that exists inside this live data or update the data that exists inside the live data. And when in doubt, always, always, always use post value. Um, but just know that it might not happen immediately because if you're not on the main thread, it again needs to get scheduled. And so you can run into race conditions, but I wouldn't worry about that right now. Just know that there's two different ways to do it and that we're going to go ahead and go with the post value route. So uh, let me run this real quick. So in our on create, we're going to say view model dot init with the context being this. And now let's, uh, sorry, I realize I can't run it at this moment because our home fragment here we still need to clean a couple things up here in order for everything to start working. So uh, let's just go ahead and do that, I guess. Uh, so in our base layer here, instead of the attractions, we're going to have the, uh, we'll call it activity view model. I can spell. It's gonna be an attractions view model. And we're gonna say get activity as main activity top view model. We're just going to go ahead and remove this from our uh, our base layer, but that's going to cause some issues here. And so let's just put these back together. Um, in our on view created of our home fragment, we were originally fetching the attractions just straight out, right? Uh, from the uh, from the main activity and actually if you remember the attractions was a list that was declared as by lazy and then we would parse the attractions when uh, we would reference them for the first time and this was actually us referencing them for the first time inside the home fragment uh, but instead we actually have a new way of doing this so we're gonna go ahead it's not called view model it's called activity view model attractions list live data and we're going to click uh, observe and so this here, the first, the first uh, parameter is your lifecycle owner. So the lifecycle owner is going to be your view lifecycle owner in a, in a fragment. And then you can kind of put this lambda function at the end. Um, I'm going to rename the, uh, the little variable that gets passed into us. And then we're just going to go ahead and instead of calling it here, we're going to do it there. So now we have our view being created and we have uh, our fragment referencing the activity view model, which has the live data within it. 
and then we are observing that live data and whenever we receive an update to it this block of code is going to run and so that block of code is going to run we're going to set the data uh, inside of our adapter notify the data set changed and everything will be all good and well uh, so this is annoying because I don't want to fix this right now uh, so let me just put this together all right we're just going to go ahead and set this uh, attraction here to be uh, a blank attraction. Um, so if we actually go ahead and click on something from the home fragment, it's not going to work. But I do just want to show you, uh, you know, that we have things back up and running. So if we can go ahead and run our application for the first time, we're going to see this series of events unfold. So the main activity loads. We have our view model that gets created for us from the uh, system factories. Inside of our onCreate function we tell the view model to initialize itself. Inside the init function that requires our context we are going to reference our repository, parse attractions, passing in the context that is required to do so and that's only because we are referencing a, a resource here, uh, a resource file, so we need our context. We're going to go ahead and parse our attractions here and return a list of attractions. And then if we go back here, we store that in a variable. We post that variable to our live data. And our live data is observed inside of our home fragment on view created. So there's a whole lot going on here. But the point is, is that everything is asynchronous at this moment in time. Uh, we don't have to we we are going to rely less on race conditions and by you know the by lazy was very nice because it was able to make sure that the first time that list was referenced that it was parsed etc so um we had uh, a whole handful of stuff going on under the hood for us let's just go ahead and uh, rerun that so that we can see it happen and you can believe that it happens so everything at this point actually uh, completely loads and I'm sure if we just click on one yeah, it actually crashes because oh yeah of course we're, we're trying to load uh, an image in that that doesn't exist because we've set it as just a regular attraction so um, let's not click on one of those so that we don't crash but you can see here that uh, that everything is up and running, everything looks the same, everything's working properly. Uh, and if we were to actually select one, once we connect up the attraction details fragment, we will be uh, a-okay. So, um, let's hit a small break point here. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and rerun it. Wait for our debugger. Okay, so we can see a little bit of information. Does it have the data here? Uh, let's see. Sorry. Uh, ah, wow, okay. So we actually caught it in a very interesting state here, which is very nice to know. Um, but if we So if we go ahead and look at this line of code at this moment in time, we're, we're completely frozen right here right now. But if we look at this moment in time, we can see that our activity view model attractions list live data dot value actually equals null. So this list, the data that's inside of, of the live data, which is a list of attractions at this moment is null because it has not been set. Right? If we go ahead and actually take a look at the activity view model attractions list live data we can see it has observers right so m observers is none that we have no uh, we have no observers at this very moment in time and then let's see, can we put one there good uh, 
again, we know that the data does not exist, but we do know that the pending data at this moment in time is of size 7 and is all of our attractions that is parsed from our dummy file. So we can actually see that we're in this weird state right now where the live data has nothing in it. It's in the middle of parsing out the data and posting that data to the live data. And then when it does eventually get uh, posted, our, our, our code here will run. So if we go ahead and I've put a whole bunch of breakpoints here, but if we go ahead and now go into our, uh, our, our callback essentially, we can see here that our attractions are exactly what was supposed to be set from uh, when we ended up parsing them. Obviously our observer was fired, so I just kind of wanted to show you that we did have an observer um, at this point, it was ourselves uh, or, or the home fragment here. So um, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Hopefully you can kind of see how this happens. Uh, and if we were to, let's put a, a serious delay here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, so don't worry about this. I'm gonna just do, don't worry about what this means. <laughs> um, You didn't see anything. Uh, I, I don't want to dive into view model scopes, coroutines, um, uh, suspend functions right this very second, but what I basically did here was just added a 5,000 millisecond delay. And so as you can see here, our fragment is loaded. We are in that delay period. And then at some later date, our code runs. It then posts this, uh, this data to the list. And, uh, and then our, our view layer that was observing it uh, ends up setting the data uh, to the screen. So hopefully that's a better, or, or uh, not, maybe not a better, but hopefully that also kind of rounds out the understanding of, you know, hey, look, we're in this delay. If you were counting for five seconds, you know, it should be right about five seconds. So you can, uh, you can hopefully get a sense that um, of how this kind of architecture works, how uh, we start to, I guess, have a little bit more freedom in the sense that when we set up our observers, we are then just going to modify, uh, you know, or, or our observers are going to be fired and then they're going to have the job of, of setting the data, in this case, to the adapter, or, or if they had to disable a button or something along those lines, we could do the same. Um, but I guess the last thing to note here is that if for whatever reason you just had this on like a five second timer in a traditional sense and after five seconds it would try to draw things on the screen, um, if you were to close the app in the meantime, that timer might still be running and then let's say the five seconds is up right now, boom, it tries to do something, the app's in a very funky state, it might even crash, who knows. Uh, but here we know that because this live data because of this observer pattern has this life cycle awareness. You could see that when we ended up closing the app, nothing happened. And then when we came back into the application, uh, the data was there. We then attached, you know, this observer again, and it said, uh, yes, you're in a state that's ready to receive this information. So here it is. And then we ended up setting all of that data on our adapter. So, um, you can see that it kind of is hopefully starting to come together a little bit. And if it's not just yet, stick around. I think when we start navigating to the next page, things will also start to make a little bit more sense. And um, we will uh, pick it up there. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Thanks for sticking with me. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the goodies that are coming up.